This modification does not require 3D printing and does not need to buy conversion parts, using all original parts instead. Welcome to Quick Mix. Today we will increase the turning angle of the WL Toys 128 in order to convert it to RWD rear wheel drive for drifting. The process is somewhat easy yet challenging, but compared to the tutorials scattered on the internet, the tutorial in this video seems to be the easiest and most cost effective. Let's go straight to the rear section first. We will cut the shaft. Remove the battery holder by unscrewing the two screws underneath. Then we cut the shaft. If the position is difficult, it is recommended to remove the entire rear gearbox. Remove the servo link. Remove the front shock tower. Unscrew the four screws of the front gearbox. Remove the front arm, which actually doesn't need a screwdriver. You can use your fingernail. Remove the top gearbox and then remove the front differential gear. Unscrew the four screws underneath to remove the bottom gearbox. Remove the front wheels with a snapping motion to make it easier. Remove the rims. Take out the dog bone. Remove the rubber ring. Take out the dog bone pin. It usually comes out on its own, but if it's stuck, you can push it out with a sim ejector or a pin. Make sure not to lose the pin in case you need to use it again later. I stick it to some tape so it doesn't get lost. Remove the lower arm. After that, we cut the lower gearbox. Um, cut after the lower arm holder. The result should look something like this. We cut the upper part of the gearbox. Initially, I wanted to cut as little as possible, but it turned out to hit the steering link to the servo, so we cut more. The bottom part also needs to be thinned to still allow room for suspension movement. The important thing is not to cut the upper arm holder. In this modification, we need to remove the ball head on the lower arm because it not only hits the tire, but we also need the ball head and its screw. I made a servo extender with a length of 18 millimeters using a 3D printer. If you don't want to use a 3D printer, make one from an old plastic ATM card or any plastic sheet. We use the screw from the ball head because its tip is sharp. Just force it a little to make a hole in the plastic. Make a hole from the back so the hole is just right. After that, we attach it to the servo. We're almost done, but if we stop here, it's still not optimal because when installed, the left and right steering links will hit the lower arm as seen in the video. If you want more steering angle, you need to remove the knuckle hub and then swap the left and right sides. So the steering link positions will be on top. Now this part is quite difficult. You need to drill the knuckle hub with a 1mm drill bit. If it's tough, you can heat the drill bit with a lighter or candle first. If you don't have a 1mm drill bit, you can use a heated pen and then screw it in using a sharp ball head nut. First, install the steering link, make sure it's not reversed. After that, you need an M2 nut as a spacer. If you don't have one, you'll need to cut the ball head screw to avoid it being too long. Then install the ball head on top of the knuckle hub. Assemble everything again. If the steering link hits the servo horn, it means it was installed incorrectly. The final stage is, is making the model shock. The process looks difficult, but once you start, it's not that hard. First, remove the top arm. Then, level the top part to make a seat for the ball head. You can sand it down or use a file. You can also use wire cutters, which is easier. Using a pin, make a mark as a guide for the screw. If it's hard, you can heat the pin first. After that, remove the ball head from the front shock tower, and then screw it onto the top arm. Anyway, in my first attempt, I didn't even need to use a pin or drill, so you can also directly use the ball head screw. Of course, if the screw is too long, it will obstruct the arm holder screw. Therefore, we need to cut the screw so it's not too long. I put two rings to avoid cutting it too short. I apply blue thread locker so the screw doesn't loosen easily. But this is optional. Attach to the upper arm. Clean the ball head to remove any leftover glue. Before installing, ensure the up and down movement is smooth. After that, reassemble everything. Make sure the up and down movement of the tire is smooth. 
If you still want to use the bumper, you need to trim it because it might hit the tire. But I didn't install it, and to fill the empty space, I used an M3 nut. Install the spring, and here's the final appearance. Of course, if you have a 2WD or RWD, you need to use a gyro to drift. If not, it will definitely spin out when you give full throttle. So if you don't have a gyro yet, I recommend saving this video, then buying a gyro first and watching this video again. Thank you for visiting the Quick Mix channel, I hope this is useful for someone, and the installation of the gyro will be covered in the next video, so this video doesn't get too long, and honestly, I need to test it first since this is my first time drifting at 128th scale. I usually drift at 1 scale. See you in the next video.